Hey guys, Laura Whitmore here with Strategic Test Prep. I am so excited to be doing this video today for you guys. I'll be unpacking the solutions to some of the most memorable math problems that were on the October 2022 SAT. Stick around, towards the end of this video, I'm gonna cover what I think was the hardest math problem on the entire test, and I think a lot of people ended up getting it wrong. I'm also gonna show you a problem that I think I made a careless mistake on. I don't know yet if I got it right or not, but I am kicking myself right now. Just as a reminder, I have a self-directed online course so if you were not happy with your performance on the math sections, I would encourage you to take my course and then sign up for another SAT. In the course, you're gonna learn all the concepts you need to know to be successful on the test, as well as some strategies to help you get the point in the event that you get stuck. That way you can score above a 700 in the math, just like I do. And so links in the description below, go ahead and click that to get started. Now let's get into it. Okay, so here's the first problem that I remembered from the test, and this is exactly what I predicted on my last video would be on there. When there's no solution um, and there's an equation, guys, you wanna have your coefficients be the same on both sides of the equation and the constants be different. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move, hang on just a second. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna move the 24CX to the other side. So essentially I have a negative 9x plus zero because if there's nothing with a negative 9x that implies it's like adding a zero. So great, okay, my constants are different. That's what I wanted. Now I'm gonna need these coefficients to be the same. So essentially I need that negative 24c to be equal to negative nine. And then I can find out what c is. Obviously it's gonna be a fraction. Fortunately, it will be positive. I think this might've been a fill-in. I don't quote me on that, but you can't grid in a negative number. So if you got a negative, that's a red flag. Um, I'm going to go ahead and reduce that. So the answer to that problem was three eighths. All right, let's go down to the next one. <laughs> this is the one I am kicking myself on you guys. It was the last problem on section four. I'm sure a lot of you remember this one. And historically, the number, the last problem on either math section should be one of the hardest. So since it was a number 38, it just seemed super, super easy. Um, they said, what is the probability of selecting? Now I've misinterpreted the question. I just um, spoke to someone and they asked, what is the probability of selecting a point in the shaded region? So my memory did not serve me well. I didn't even remember exactly what the question was asking on this. And the shaded region was actually the bigger rectangle. You guys, I'm hoping I got this right. I don't know, I might've misread the question. And if so, I'm gonna be so upset. Um, so anyways, the area of the larger rectangle is 35, right? Five times seven is 35. And then the area of the smaller one is five times three, which is 15. So that means the area of the shaded region is 20. 35 minus 15 is 20. So you would just do 20 over 35, which reduces down to four sevenths. I might've put three sevenths, guys. I'm not gonna lie. And you know, I keep getting a 780 every time I take the test. So I'm a little frustrated right now. I wanted an 800. And if I made a careless mistake and got this one wrong, I'm. Not gonna lie, I, I'm gonna be a little upset about it. Okay, next one. So I don't remember exactly what this shape looked like. Um, apologies for the drawing. I'm trying to do a rendition of what I remember, but it, you guys will probably recall it was a very funky shape and they wanted the perimeter. And so the answer was D46 because I think College Board wanted you guys to like forget to add in certain like little parts that you had to like calculate. Um, so it was the largest number in the range and I think they were banking on you picking a smaller number because you left some stuff out. Okay, this next one I had to think about for a minute. It was talking about the population of a city in China um, from 1990 where T was years. I mean, this is an exponential growth problem, right guys? Now these numbers might be a little off. I can't remember if the principal was 1.11 or something else. So I apologize if I got the principal wrong. Um, but the growth rate was 6.6%, as you can see in the, in the exponential growth function. And then the question asks, what is the correct function that represents the population in a city in China from 1995? So they started five years later than 1990, and they changed the T to an N, so they had the interval for N be from zero to 20 years. So basically, 
All the other answer choices, like at the end of the day, didn't make sense. I'm not used to seeing an exponential growth function like this. Again, that's why it took me a minute to like think about it and figure out, but none of the other ones made sense. And the right answer ended up being 1.11 times 1.066 to the fifth to account for the first five years. And then the same growth rate to the end for the next 20. Again, another prediction that I had that came true, they wanted to know on this, this problem right here, um, what does B have to be for there to be no solution? Um, they love no solution and infinitely many solution problems. I was not surprised at this. Now there's a couple ways you could approach it. You could approach it just like the other problem I did with the nine and the negative nine and the negative 24 C. Um, you could set them equal to each other because they're both equal to Y. So let me just show you that. I could just say, okay, well then if y equals 3x plus 5 and y equals bx plus 8, that means 3x plus 5 must equal bx plus 8. And we already know b has to be the same as the 3x. Coefficients have to be the same and constants have to be different. We've got the different constants with 5 and 8. I need the b to be a 3 so that those x's will cancel out and I'll have 5 equals 8, which we know isn't true. However, there is a faster way to do this problem too. Think about it graphically. Um, I have y equals 3x plus 5. That's a line going up 3 and over 1 to positive and negative infinity. So if I have a parallel line, they will never intersect, right? If they never intersect, there will be no solution there. For parallel lines to exist, they need to have the same exact slope. So the other line would have to be 3x plus 8. They'll just have different y-intercepts. So without doing any algebra, you could just reason it out. Oh, I also need a slope of 3 for there to be no solution to that. And let me just say real quick, guys, this is just my way that I did these in the heat of the moment, during the test, with time ticking. There are other ways to do all of these math problems. So if you did something a different way and you wanna share it, please comment below. I would love to hear it. Um, it's just really neat to see different ways. And you know, I always love learning from my students and learning more efficient ways than I did. And I'm gonna probably need one from you when we get down to another problem. This was the hardest problem, I think, on the test. A lot of the students that I spoke with after the test missed this one or got stuck on this one. My way of doing this wasn't very elegant, as you will see. Um, it was a little sloppy, a little messy, but I think I got it done. So first of all, they gave us this problem, um, but they gave it to us in English, so we had to translate it into math. It was like four times the square root of A equals nine times the cube root of B. So you had to be able to write that out right here, okay? And then they said, if A equals two thirds, then what is the value of X where A, of X, or A to the X equals B? Okay, so first, because I want to get a to the x equals b, I thought, all right, well, let me get b by itself and find out what b is defined as, and then I can set that equal to a to the x and solve. So I just started to move everything away from b. Oh, and sorry, I actually substituted in two-thirds for a, too. So let me go ahead and do that, because they told us a is two-thirds on this problem. And then um, to undo the cube root, you have to cube it. So you had to cube both sides. Now at this point, I had to put that into the calculator. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that right now. Okay, so I got an irrational decimal, which was 0 0.047787, da, 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 and that equals B. So at this point, I could have used logarithms. I didn't feel like doing that. Um, I was afraid I would make a mistake. So I just guessed and checked, which I think guys is such um, a like underrated strategy sometimes. So I did, okay, I think I did two thirds to the um, sixth and it was too big. Now I know that if a number is less than one, when I raise it to a higher power, it's actually gonna get smaller. So then I did two thirds to the eighth and that was too small. So then I did two thirds to the seventh and that was again too big. So I wanted something that was between seven and eight. So I did two, cause I know I'm the SAT typically especially when it's a fill-in, this was a grid in question, they're not gonna do crazy stuff. 
I'm gonna use probably um, a round decimal or like a very easy decimal to work with. So I went with 7.5 because that seemed like an answer that would be on the SAT. So I raised it to the 7.5 and I got exactly the same decimal that I was looking for. So I knew that X had to be 7.5 and that was the answer to that one. <laughs> So yeah, please tell me if you had a better way. Did you use logarithms or something else? I would love to hear it. Again, like I said, sometimes it's sloppy, sometimes it's messy. Um, but yeah, those are a few of the problems that I remembered from the test. I hope that this helped you. Just a heads up, I know some of you guys in Florida had uh, a hurricane and your test was canceled. I'm so sorry. I hope everything's okay down there for you Southwest Coast people in Florida. Um, you will be taking a different test, so I'm sorry this video is not going to help you. My students actually last year in March had a snow day up here in upstate New York, so their test was canceled, and they ended up giving them a different test two weeks later. These scores are going to be released, and you'll get your reports with all the test questions back in a couple of weeks, I think on October 14th. So I plan to do another video going over some more questions once we get that report back. And yeah, see you guys again soon. Thanks for watching.